Hey everybody, and welcome to Hey Man. I am Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? How you doing? Oh, you know, I'm a little tired. Me too. Me nice. too. You, you're tired from a workout. I'm tired from getting drunk last night. Yeah. So, you know, two different types of tired for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to tell you, for real, I'm taking a nap when I get home. Yeah, that's some old man shit. Is it? it Midday is. nap? Midday nap. We get, But I was up at 5 a.m. Old man shit. Getting up at 5 a.m. Old man shit. No, I'm 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 getting up to walk the puppy at 5 a.m. That's Vegas shit. Yeah, but it's also old man shit. Okay, 5 a.m. is early. You get up at 5 a.m. no matter what. Also, if you're walking. The yeah, puppy. dude. I, and at the gym at 10 a.m. So what? It's two right now. So I've I've put in a full day work already. Like I've been up for nine hours doing. I am. Fucking we get on a flight tonight, dude. I'm tired. I'm. I am. Don't sleepy. sleep. Don't sleep now. You're not gonna be able to sleep on the flight. That's not how it works. Oh. <laughs> That's young man shit. Oh, oh you hit okay. a certain age and you're like, am you I could, laying down? You yeah. could sleep at any point in time. Yeah, multiple times during the day. Interesting. Yep. Old man shit. Exactly. That's my point. But so, I did a workout today that you could not do. Yo, I did a Pilates workout today. You always say that. And I know that's you just me trying to get me to be like, oh yeah, I can definitely do it. Nah, Which nah, I could. No. Nah, nah, th- Yo, this woman, first of all, She's the best trainer I've ever had in my life. How mm-hmm. many trainers have I had in my life? A gazillion. Uh, I've and I've been a gym rat. My yo, this woman Delphine. It's a great name, by the way. She, I think she's French, and she is a and, and by the way, not just Pilates trainer, but she's had me out just in in the with the general pop in the gym. Yo, I've never worked out with anybody like her. One thing I like about her is she's a psycho. She seems like it. She's psycho. Oh, she's psycho with me because she knows I like it. So, like, you know, when I'm struggling, she laughs at me. Or if Good I make a, if I make a weird noise, she'll say, and I'm gonna do a French accent, right? Why are you making that weird noise? You sound Russian. Is that Russian? It sounds Russian. Oh, let me try it again, French. Let me hold on. Let me do a lead in first. Hey, ooh, woo, woo. That's not it. What are you, Joey from Friends? Again? Yeah, I felt like <laughs> Yogi Bear. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hey, hey, boo boo. I'm leaning I'm in. French. I'm leaning no. in. I am the French. Okay. Not bad. Okay. I am the, What was, what did I say? Why you make easy funny noise? That's German. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you're, you're getting closer. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Pepe Le Pew. Why you make easy funny noise? Better? Yeah, it's better than we where we started. <laughs> it's better than okay. where you started for sure. But yo, I will do this. How about this? I'll pay for one workout. You come with me and we do the session and we film it. You don't think I can do it? And we film it. But you don't think I can do it? I, 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 By the way, what's not think I can do it? Like taps out and won't finish the workout? Yeah, or? yeah but that doesn't... Look, man. Because you'll have to stop mid a bunch of exercise. So you'll finish the workout, but you're not. We did something today. Zero chance you could do. <laughs> that is bullshit. Okay. A hundred percent. Are you in for the one workout we film it? I know she's a psycho. You know why? Because every time I go to the gym with you, or like when I did, when we yeah, were visiting, yeah, yeah. I would just go play basketball. And every time I'd walk by, she was like a used car salesman. And she was just following me up and down where she was training people. Like, why don't you just come work out with me? It's not that big a problem. Yeah. What's what's the deal? And I'm like, if my dad likes you as a trainer, it means I'm going to hate you. Yeah, yeah. Because I like psychos. That's yeah. what I want. I yeah. want somebody who's just like, why are you doing that to that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sometimes, like, if I'm not engaging my core, she'll slap my stomach. Go, Big belly. Yeah, she'll go, engage your belly. It's <laughs> amazing. She's like an MI6 fucking Jeez. trainer. Oh, my God. Let me tell you. The best. I was tra- wondering when you were going to notice that again. The best trainer I've ever had. And you know I like, because I like to work. I'm, if I'm in there and I'm paying you, I don't I don't need to. And she's funny. Like, across the board, good stuff. Mm. Um, But, yeah, I'm tired. You seem tired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Now, listen, before we get going, New Jersey this weekend, guys, New Brunswick, super excited. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend a day and we're going to go see uh, my buddy, Joey Diaz. Woo! Can't wait. I haven't seen Joe Diaz since pre-pandemic. Really? Uh, 2019. It was at Spade Show when he was on the panel. Oh, no shit. It was the last time I saw him. And I I remember telling my boss, Colleen, I was like, hey... I'm going to need like 30 minutes. She goes, why? I go, I got to go sit and talk to Joe Diaz. I haven't seen him in like a decade. Yeah. And so Joe, Joe and I go a long time without seeing each other. Yeah. I remember 
one time where I was just shooting hoops at our old childhood house, the house on Montilaha. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember you just pulled up and like you were getting dropped off and then Joe Diaz got out of the car and I was like, what the, what is he doing here? And he was like, oh, I just ran into him outside. So he drove me home. I yeah. was like, what were you doing outside? I don't remember why you didn't have a car or why he dropped you off. But yeah. He just kind of showed up at the house. Yeah. yeah. I have but I go, I go years without seeing Joe Diaz. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Coco. What? He also promised us the best Reuben sandwich we've ever had. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. Joe Diaz says it's the best Reuben I've ever had. It's going to be the best Reuben I've yeah, ever had. Yeah, it's pretty great. Can't wait. It's pretty great. Pretty great. I'm pretty excited. Uh, but so New Jersey uh, uh, and New, Bruns in New Brunswick this weekend at the Stress Factory, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Remember, Friday Night Late Show is the Mushroom Show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step up my dose this week, see what happens. <laughs> um, the, the week after that, guys is uh, Pittsburgh on Wednesday. We just added a late show. Uh, we sold out the early show at oh, the Pittsburgh theater. Pittsburgh Wednesday. And oh, no, P Pittsburgh Thursday. Thursday I'm sorry. Erie. So Pittsburgh Thursday, we added a late show. Um, and then Erie, Pennsylvania, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. I will tell you something right now, dude. Let me tell you something about Erie. Okay? The last time. And then uh, Nashville for Bonanza Extravaganza on that Sunday night. Extravaganza. The, the lineup is fucking ridiculous. If you're anywhere near there, this show can't be missed. Can I tell you about Erie? I don't, I've never been to Erie, so okay. I'm excited. Now, the last time I was in Erie, and it was a while ago, the last time I was in Erie, dude, you know how many shows, I can't even think about how many shows I've done in my life. Uh, uh, I can't calculate that. I can't even imagine. But let me tell you something. Erie, Pennsylvania is the only place I've ever performed in my life where on stage I've thought, these people drink a lot. That's the place, yo, dude. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We've been to the, a lot. Uh, we've been to a lot of places. I think that Nashville. Nope. I think that when we're in Florida, nope. you're telling me it's Erie, Pennsylvania, the only place where I've noticed from the stage. I was like, these people fucking drink. Jesus, drink, drink. Yeah, dude. It, it it was like I was I had. It, so I'm excited to go back and see if they're still putting them down the way they were before. Here, you heard it here. You better be putting them down. Yeah, dude. Uh, unbelievable. But anyways, besides that, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. All the UK and European tours are up, everybody. So if you're wondering when they are, go to ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. And uh, one last huge thank you to all the new listeners um, and the old listeners. I have to say, from the bottom of my heart, truly grateful for all of you. Absolutely. Um, it truly, truly grateful for all of you and everything that your support and uh, allows a f me to do during mm -hmm. in my life. So uh, thank you all so much. Um, and with that, listen, dude. Hmm. Are you going to see Barbie? I think we're going to wait till it comes out. At home so we can see it. But yeah. I will say, I do really want to get dressed up in all pink and go see Barbie. Yeah, I will. I'm thinking about it. But also, I'm trying to convince Amon to go do it with me. But I want to get all dressed up in pink and go see Barbie and then take a two-hour break, go home, change to everything in all black, and then go see Oppenheimer. Wow. Why, why do you have to wear all black for Oppenheimer? It's a movie about how the at atomic bomb was made. I feel like that kind of fits the bill. Yeah, And, okay. the, and the movie looks like it's shot very dark. Um, not a lot of lighting. Except for when the bomb goes off, um, and that in that general aesthetic yeah. seems all black. Which one are you more excited to see? Uh, probably Barbie. And if all honestly, I, I I'm saying I'll go do Barbenheimer like everyone's doing. I probably won't go see Oppenheimer because truthfully, could give two shits. Really, historically, you're not interested at all. There's just been so like, oh, it's another historic movie about about something that happened in World War II. What does that mean? Every every movie in World War II is a historic movie. No, that's what I'm saying though. It's like, oh, it's it's another it's another movie about something that happened in World War II. I don't know. I just feel like I'm kind of over the war movies. The last really one that I really liked was Dunkirk. Is this a war movie? It's about them making the atomic bomb. It's about something yeah, related but, to war. Yeah, but it's not a war movie. Dude, this is arguably top three most important thing that ever happened. Uh, a hundred percent. Ever happened. No, I understand that. I understand that. Had this not happened, we wouldn't be living in the society that we live in today. Are you familiar with like how it went down? Or let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a different question. Let me ask you a different question. Okay. Me, can I can I ask a, 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 a clarifier on that question you're going to describe anyways? Yes. Do I know how what went down? How they went about deciding to make it, how long it took to make, what else was happening in the world? 
why it was so important to make at that time. Because it wasn't right after the Japanese who just attacked Pearl Harbor. All right. So listen, it's important to know your history. That is true. Okay. I, it's important to know your history. But let me ask you another question. Are you, and, and you can be completely honest, obviously. Are you not interested in history? I used to be a big history guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm interested in it, but again, like, I just feel like I don't need to go see another movie about, yeah, 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 yeah. about something that happened in World War II. Totally. And I know, yeah, okay. Can yeah. I tell you, I was way more interested to see Oppenheimer than Barbie until, until I started seeing all these news stories or things on social media about people being upset and mostly on the conservative right, Chucker. upset about um, that they feel like the Barbie is anti-man or, and I, and I'm going to, and uh, makes men seem stupid. And I, I'm going to say this sight unseen and I've never seen the movie. And, and I think, you know, me, I don't give opinions on things unless I've seen it, looked at it and feel like that I am in a position to give an opinion. All right. This is going to be the exception. Okay. If you are triggered in a man and you are triggered by the Barbie movie, you are the biggest fucking pussy on this planet. You might be right. Yo, dude, you are the, listen, you are a snowflake that melts before it hits the ground. If you are a dude and you walk out of there feeling with your feelings hurt out of the fucking Barbie movie, you are the giganticest, pussiest person. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Gigant. And I, I, neither one were words. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, I haven't even seen the movie. And I, I'm not saying there aren't things in movies or T or whatever that are maybe anti guy. Although I don't, I feel like people's art. So I guess not anti guy, I'm more just like pro woman. Like I, I don't which know because I just fine. I haven't I haven't seen the I haven't seen the movie, so I don't I don't know what it is. But but I would say this also. If you people are going in and leaving Barbie disappointed, right? Not outside of the outside of the uh the man stuff. Right. Some people are like, well, the story. If you went to Barbie for the fucking story, you're as dumb as the person who got their feelings hurt. Yeah. Guys. It's a made-up world. You're going into Barbie to watch Ryan Gosling and to watch... Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. They are incredibly beautiful people mm -hmm. and incredibly talented actors. You're going to Barbie to turn your brain off and have some silly fun. Period. End of story. That's like when people say to me, yeah, man, I don't... I didn't really like the story in Transformers. You went to the wrong fucking movie. Yeah, it went a, to the wrong movie. It's about a movie. It's a movie about some alien robots. It's turn your brain off to save the, the planet. Yeah, dude, turn your brain off. Fun. That's it. You're you're you're. But this Barbie thing, man. Everything has to be political now. Every just because you don't didn't like your feelings, you you. Everything has to be political. You fucks. Can't you all just let us get dressed up in pink pants and a pink shirt, smoke a little weed, and have a good time? You gotta be out there with your fucking feelings. True. Eat my dick. And I listen, man. I I usually try to keep this shit to myself. Yeah. But we are at a tipping point where everything they're making you, and when I say they, I say both sides. They're making you pick sides on everything you do. 100%. And it's so fucking dumb because I can't believe the look, the majority of us live in the middle somewhere, mm -hmm. but we are driven by these two fuck a wad of a side of extremes who are the loudest. Mm -hmm. We just got to take our fucking voices back. This Barbie shit is the dumbest fucking thing. I'm sorry. I had to get out and I haven't even seen it. I haven't even seen it. Mm hmm. And I still think you're the dumbest fucking person I've ever met. Not you, but... Yeah, you better not be talking about me. All right. Sorry about that. You all right? Yeah, man. You sure? Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Uh, nah. Yeah, it seems like you did. Nah. <laughs> I mean, here's the deal. Like, I, I honestly know that I'm going to feel the same way when I walk out of there. I know what I'm going to think is, 
what is the problem? Yeah, what is there to get upset about? It's and a, by the way, it's, it's a completely made up world based on a fucking plastic doll. And by the way, people have been making fun of Ken forever. Yeah. I, where were you when they were talking about his no dick? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I like, mean, Ken is, Ken, in Barbie and Ken, Ken is the joke. That's the whole point. Ken, there have been Ken jokes coming around forever. And yeah. by the way, man, how can you not enjoy a movie that has Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie in it? Seems like it seems like something that would be enjoyable. Like Aman was telling me that a lot of people online are saying that it is actually more of an emotional movie. Like it's like, great, which is awesome. And yeah, the director, she's a genius oh, director, hundred percent. Yeah. So that's why I think we haven't seen it yet because I don't. I, I still have no idea. But I'm still yeah. trying to convince her because I want to go see it. I want to get dressed. I also just want to get dressed up in all pink. I'll go pinksies with you. You don't own that much pink. You don't even own pink pants. I do. How do you know I don't own pink pants? Because I know for a fact you don't. You own white pants that are too tight, and that's about it. I own red pants. That I, are also way too tight. Those aren't too tight. Are those not the ones from that picture from Kentucky? No. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, I own pink and black pants that I, with my pink and black blazer. It doesn't count. Pink pants. I have pink shorts. I, I have all pink shorts. So I can go get some pink pants. I have two pairs of pink shorts. I have one that is like really short shorts if you don't wear them. Not only am I going to wear pink pants, I'm going to buy them extra tight because I know how much you like them. When I wear a tight pant. Tight. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how mom likes it when you wear those tight pants in public again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I go, I go, I go pink pants and I get a pink shirt. I got I got pink socks, pink shoes, pink shorts, pink shirt. Your mom will go and then we'll just we'll we'll talk about it to go, maybe. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know and and here's the thing, like in general, I don't like to react to other people's art like that because people get to express themselves the way they want. Art's all perspective. It's listen, dude, it's not and every piece of art is not for everybody. hundred percent. But but can I be honest with you? Like I, I'm one of those guys that I just think just doesn't get art. So uh probably about a year ago, my girlfriend and I are on talking about art, art on the wall art. Art, yeah, like art like in a museum kind of art. Yeah. Right. So we went to the Broad, which is a museum in LA in downtown the arts district, right? We were mainly going there for a Takashi Murakami exhibit. And Takashi Murakami is like my if I had to pick an artist, my favorite artist. Okay. He's very modern. He does all these crazy, like, you know those socks I have with the colorful flower on them? Yeah. That's Murakami. Okay. And so that's like his signature, his signature thing. He had an exhibit at the Broad and it was fucking astounding. It was so beautiful. Like for me, I'm like, yo, this is art. And then we went and walked around the rest of it. And there was just, okay, can every, if whoever's watching can see this black piece of foam behind me, it was a canvas like that with paint just in different textures and different brush strokes, but not a single image, just different variations like of Pollock, a certain, Like a Pollock. What the fuck? Yeah. What? Like people are like, oh, it really makes you think. Yeah, it makes me think about what the fuck I'm yeah. looking at. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, think about yeah. what you think about nothing. Like, it looks like I'm just staring at a blank canvas of yeah. color. What am I supposed to be getting out of it? Like, I, I'm like, look, and I, this is no bash on art. I think that people, I think if you're an artist and you're a painter, you are so much more talented than I am because if I could paint, I would. Yeah. But I can't, right? I can't draw either. Like, Anything of that artistic ability is just not in my body. Yeah. It's not in our body. We just don't have it. Listen, I'm putting, dude, and I'm putting you in that because I feel the same I way. I definitely got it from you. I feel the same way. I just like, I, I, and somebody helped me out. Like my girlfriend, Iman, is so artistic. She can draw. She can paint. She can make rugs. She can design shit. Like she can fucking do anything, right? Yeah. We're going to a museum. She's like, oh, I love this one. I love this one. Oh, I love the textures on that. And I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? Yeah. Like, I, Somebody help me. I, I just, I'm with you. I just don't get, like, what am I supposed to feel off of something that has a little ridge in it because you put more paint there than there, and that's gray and that's white? Dude, I'm, well, I'm with you. Like, help me. Honestly. I don't know. But honestly. That's it, my it, rant for the show, for the, it, for the podcast. It's like, what? Why? I'm with you, dude. And honestly, like, if you put up, this is so bizarre. Jackson Pollock, you know who he does? He does the split. Yep. And Bob Ross. You know? Uh-huh. Which one do I think I had a better chance of doing? The Pollock. The Pollock. Are you telling I me I could just throw, throw some paint, paint at a canvas? Fuck yeah. I've yeah. always thought the same thing. And Bob Ross, I'm like, I couldn't make a tree look like a tree. Well, but Bob Ross also instructs you the entire time. But, but but any kind of, any of those paintings that you see that are whatever, quote unquote, lifelike, 
those are not valued as much. But there's some paintings like abstract paintings, like Picasso's. I'm like, you tell me I couldn't do that? Yeah. I right. mean, if you gave me a hundred tries, I could, figure I could make out, something I think, that looked yeah. kind of like that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Now, but I will say like the, 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 the work I did like there, like we did see a couple Warhols and I like his stuff because yeah. his stuff is colorful and attracts the eye. Like, uh, it's just more fun to look at. Murakami was there, an artist named an artist named Basquiat, yeah, which is like yep. a, uh, amazing. So I really like their stuff. But everything else, I was like, like one of them was like big, like it was a really big chair, and, and then you would stand next to it and it goes makes you feel small, doesn't it? Yeah, because nobody's this fucking big. Like it's just the sculpture. What dude, dude. what am I supposed to be thinking about? Like fucking Jack the Beanstalk, the <laughs> yeah. giant that's gonna come down and sit in this chair and read me a story? Like, dude, what what happens in this museum <laughs> when we go to Dublin? We're going to the Leprechaun Museum. You see, that is more of a museum for me. Like, I, I, We're going I, to the I understand Leprechaun that because that is, in, like, it's going to be more like information, like, uh, you know, like, it's going to give you more information on what the lore is behind it, though, because it has a background. Yeah, but museum implies facts. No, a museum... <laughs> A museum doesn't imply facts and real, right? But okay, but to to for this, that's fair. But that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like museum for the leprechaun is like these are the wait to see the giant chair that the leprechaun these are, is. These are the facts, right? That are about the leprechaun lore. So technically, that's right, I guess. Can I tell you? So when you go in the leprechaun museum, there's like a hallway that has that like spinny. Is it a big chair or a really tiny chair? Okay, it has a hallway that has like a spinny, right? Oh yeah, it yeah. makes you feel like you're going into another dimension, <laughs> and then you walk out. And you're in a two rooms with giant furniture, so you can feel what it's like to be a leprechaun. That's so you need help getting up on the chair and shit. It's a fuck. I haven't showed you those pictures. No, it's amazing. The leprechaun museum. I'm gonna tell you something else. That's ridiculous. If you ever wondered to what happened to the person who was really into musical theater in your high school, I'll tell you what they're doing. Working they're, at the Leprechaun Museum? Yeah, they're doing tours of the Leprechaun Museum. Hilarious. They are in character one thousand percent, dude. Can't wait. We, I'm just telling you right now, We're we going. should come up with some questions to try and throw them off character and see if like we can ask, no, no, not like fuck with them or like ridiculous questions, but like ask questions about a leprechaun. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, you they're in. They, there's no oh, question sure. that they, I'm sure, haven't been asked. They, but, but I'll tell you something else. Some of the stories about leprechauns are creepy as fuck. Well, yeah. You ever seen the movie Leprechaun? It's not supposed yeah. to be like a fun movie. Yeah. Although that movie did make me laugh. Who's Jen, getting, Jennifer who, Aniston was who's getting there. fucking hunted down by a leprechaun, dude. Come if on. you if you get killed by a leprechaun, shh, you uh you're gonna have to just sign off on going to hell because you're yeah. getting made fun of everywhere you go for yeah, that, without a doubt. Now listen, afterworld, no after afterlife, no afterlife. You're getting made fun of for the rest of eternity. I um, I I I sifted through some emails we were being sent. Ooh. By the way, hey man with three A's, hey man pod at gmail.com. Is that right? Correct. HeyManPod at gmail.com. If you want to send us any questions, you can. Um, okay. Here we go. There, And I won't read your first and last names. Just your... See, you said that when we did this last time, and you read first and last name for the first six out of eight people. Yeah, this is bad something. And he... It doesn't... Okay. He asked... He or she... Um, they asked a bunch of different questions. So we just can answer all of them? Um, we're going to just answer the one that we haven't answered already. Because okay. some of the questions are, um, did Jacob ever fix the Xbox? Yes. Get oh, Jacob yeah. to, to reveal some crazy shit he did that I know about. We talk about that, I all, do the that time. all the time. I did that this past weekend, I think. Yep. It? But how about this? Are there any conspiracy theories that you believe or that you are more... Uh, inclined to believe conspiracy theories. Uh, I don't know if I'm more conspiracy theories, but like I, I'm more in the beliefs that there are lots of creatures on this planet that people would consider mythical. Um, to still, I would, I would think, live today because. 97, 93% of the world's oceans have never been explored. Yeah. So I would like to think that there are still things in the ocean, in the parts of the oceans we have discovered that have been here longer than we have. I think there's no doubt about Is that. that. Kind of conspiracy theory? No, but I'll Kay. take that. So for me, like... I'll give you an example of what I conspiracy. Like for me, Megalodon, 100%. Okay. 100%. I'm in for that. Mermaids, I'm in for it too. Okay. 
I, I don't, don't think that's conspiracy I theory, don't, though. But that's like that's like lore. But that's cool. Conspiracy theory. I that I think would be like like, like inside jobs or. Here's what mine is. I don't think there's any way that JFK was killed the way they've been trying to tell us he was killed. I mean, he was definitely killed by a gun and all that shit. But there's no way that that dude did all of that. Zero percent chance that the government or some higher ups weren't involved in this dude. That's my in the assassination of JFK. A hundred percent. Whoa, that's that would be mine. That would be mine. I, I will say the the other one that people say nowadays that I that makes me think, but also like obviously I, I don't think it's true, is that the humans and the the pharaohs didn't actually have the the slaves build the pyramids that it was actually aliens and it was a sign look man if you uh, the more i've the more i've researched into the pyramids the tougher it is for me to believe that people did that it's and look we're we're jewish we're not taking anything from that but that 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 is so hard to think that people were able to carry those size rocks yeah, but dude dude just a sh- forget ever system forget all that the precision with which those are made, yeah. Uh, without like the tools, nah. did you also see in the Himalayan mountains that there was a pyramid-like? Uh, that wasn't. Up, that was uh, up in the. Uh, or not Himalayans. It was a. Uh, it was in uh, the Arctic. Oh yeah, in Antarctica. Did you see yeah. that there was a pyramid-like yeah. structure found in the Arctic below a mountain? It, but it was. It turns out it was a mountain. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Ooh. Okay. All right. I would have liked that. Well, we're, maybe you and I will dive into conspiracy theories at some point in time later in, in one of these podcasts. Yeah, I'm, I'm more into lore than I am conspiracy theories. Like, one thing I also believe in that a lot of people, like, a lot of TikToks are made about, like, you know what a skinwalker is? Mm. Okay, so a skinwalker is essentially, like, if you're ever out alone in the forest and you're doing something and you hear somebody or something. Can I stop right there? Yes. What would I be doing? Hunting. Out? Okay. Camping, okay. Going on a hike, yep, yep. Fucking any of those things, okay. Yep. yep. So yep. a lot of things. Yep. Yep. Um, if you ever hear like, there's been a lot of accounts of people when they're in the forest, or even with groups of people, but in the, in the forest, and you hear somebody crying out for help. Yeah. And it's, and if you call back and you're like, hey, where are you? And all they say is one word. It's just help, help. It's something called a skinwalker because a skinwalker is something that has, pretty much, is almost able to shape shift slash imitate a human uh, or another animal or something else of that nature. Like, it's essentially just a shapeshifter. Um, and they can, live in the forest? And they live in the forest or in the wild. Um, and what they do is they'll imitate a human that's in trouble and get another person to go and help them or look for that person, and then they'll just attack them. And do what to them? Kill them. And they become them? I, I, I bet you that's part of it. Okay. But so they also, yeah. So I think oh, skinwalkers. Another reason not to go into the forest. Guys. Skinwalkers. So I, I believe in that kind of shit. Um, okay. You like the mythical shit. Yeah. I I'm like, on board for that. I'm in for mythical shit. Okay. I'm in for that. All right. Email Bermuda, me. Bermuda Triangle, Loctus Monster, fucking Bigfoot. I'm in for all that shit. Email number two. Uh, from Barry. Hey, big fan. Love listening to y'all shoot the shit and make each other laugh. Um, listen to y'all's podcast helps pass the time while I'm busting ass at work. My question, I Joe Josh has a funny story he tells on stage about a stripper. Does Jacob have a stripper story? Uh, you want to know what my stripper story is? I've never been to a strip club. Yeah, I think we've talked about that. It, it, yeah. I, I will tell you what a different, like, I could not wait. Yeah, you didn't have free porn on the internet. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that, I think that's the difference, right? This is my strip club. My This is my stance on strip clubs. Look, Girl, if, look, if you're dancing at a club, girl, make your money. I think there's a specific demographic of people that will never leave going to a strip club. Yeah. And I think, I think that's, that's power for the women in there because you, you know, they're making sure. the men just drop sure. their sure. hard-earned money on the floor. Yeah. For, as a guy though, I, ju- I that's exactly what I see it as. I'm dropping money on the floor and walking out with nothing. Like it, honestly, if I was going to waste money like that, I'm going to a casino. What the fuck you mean? Yeah. I just lost 300 bucks yesterday at the casino and. 40 minutes. It was the fastest. That's how it happened. It was the trip club too. That, it, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I had more fun spinning the slot yeah, machine than yeah. I would sitting in a strip club. Yeah. I just think it's a waste of money. Can I tell that's you? That's just my personal opinion. So I just don't. It was such a. Yeah. 
the again the lore behind it. and i was never a dude who was be like i'm gonna go by myself and sit in the front row no but to go with a bunch of friends and get fucked up it felt like a party can i tell you the funny we do that at home can i tell you the funniest thing do you know there was a strip club near your preschool and <laughs> I don't even know where I like this is going. Okay, there was a strip club near your preschool. And sometimes there were some of us who would show up early. And like, if you showed up early, you just wait. You, you, but you thought that the dads would walk into the strip club, we'd, we'd meet, and have a beer and hang out until their kids it, got out of a school. Yeah, we'd meet at Seventh Vale. And which was on Sunset. That's what was called a Seventh Vale. The Seventh Vale was the strip club. It was on Sunset, right across from Rock and Roll Ralphs, basically. And what a neighborhood. So, so we would go down from Temple Israel, which is where you went to preschool. What'd you call it though? The Jew School. Yep. <laughs> and um, so we'd leave the Jew School, and we would. I remember, like, I I was showing up, and some dude was he was leaving. He was like, "You coming?" And well, where are we going? He was like, a bunch of us, if we show up early, we head down to Seventh Fail and hang out for a little bit. And I was like, yeah, I'll go down there with you guys. So one day... What, what kind of... Was it like a Tuesday afternoon? Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. And, um, you know, your school got out at 1230. So we were there at like 1130 in the morning. Yeah, they thought you guys were fucking degenerate. Right. So, oh, they... Yeah. No, we were probably there around noon. And uh, eleven thirty noon doesn't that doesn't make it any better? Felt better. No, felt better. It doesn't feel it. Why? Because it's AM to PM. AM PM. Yep. Nope. I'm gonna go eleven thirty AM for the story. So one day we're there, and a woman comes out, and they're like, "Put your hands together for cinnamon, everybody, cinnamon." Cinnamon. And um, she turns a corner. And as she turns the corner, we see her turn around and do this. No, 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 baby, mommy has to work for a little while. So she. Not only she had to bring her kid to work, but the kid almost followed her out on stage. We all gave her money. We were like, we should give this, but this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, so she can afford a babysitter tomorrow. Or afford to put her kid in the school next door. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, but anyways. Yeah, that's about right. good stuff. That's pretty funny. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, no story for me. All right, this is from Kevin. Probably won't ever be a story for me, honestly. Kevin. Kevin. Kevin wants to know, Jacob, what's the one thing as a parent your dad did or does that you want to do as a parent? And what's one thing he did or does that you definitely won't do as a parent? I think the open relationship and what we have and how I know I can talk to him legit about anything is very important. So I definitely want to have that kind of relationship with my kid. But that starts with boundaries. So I think the boundaries you had growing up with that line between being a friend and a father was very important. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something I'll definitely try to uh, mirror when I have kids. Um, one thing you did or do. Yeah, you're not going to hurt my feelings. By the that. Way. Oh, I would let my kids have some sugar cereal and shit in the house so that they don't go crazy right when they leave the house and decide to just shove it all in their face all at once. Yeah. I, I yeah, like like I'd probably be like, oh yeah, we'll do like a twelve pack of soda a month or like a sugar cereal for the month or something like that. And once it runs out, when the month comes back, we can go back and get another one. And not like having it always stocked in the fridge like I do now, but I'm a grown up so I can. Um but you know, like having a little bit of something in the house, not expired candy, not black licorice, like, you know, giving some 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 extracurricular things that they can eat. Okay. Or drink or whatever. Okay. You know what's funny is that... Oh, and also, I'm not going to have an alarm on the house and on my kids' windows. Or, yes, you will. Mm, we'll see. Why, you want them to sneak out? Uh, I mean, look, if I'm still doing comedy, I'm going to need material about how they try to sneak in and we're too drunk and fail through the window. <sighs> Hilarious that you're thinking that you... You missed, a lot of you missed a lot of opportunities with me about possibly come me coming home and you sitting on the couch and turning on a light and going, I've been waiting for you. Yeah, you know yeah but you know what? I That means I'd have to stay up. Yeah. That's I figured, Although I was staying up later back then. I figured out, you were, I figured out ways to sneak out. You what? Yeah, I figured out ways to sneak out. How? Okay, so you did put a sensor for the alarm on my window in yeah. my bedroom. So yeah. every time I opened it, it would go, Boop. bedroom, window. Beep, beep. Yeah. It's just, fuck, Gladys was so annoying. We named yeah. our system Gladys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if my window was open and you turned the alarm on, and I didn't move my window? 
my window could stay open. Mm. And so I just had a screen and I would, I would leave my window all the way open and then I would let you guys turn off the alarm. I would remember how I lost my screen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I kicked out my screen too many times. I kicked a hole in it. Is why were you kicking it out? Why weren't you just lifting it and bring it inside? <sighs> I was a dumb kid and I thought it was funnier that way. And then also at one time I came back kind of high and I tried to kick it in and I was like, oh, that's not how that works. So I kicked a hole through it. And that's when I stopped sneaking out because I didn't well, have a screen door anymore. You didn't just want to use your hands? Yeah. Nah, I was like, it? I was like an actor, was like fucking Tom Cruise. I was like, Psh. I love that. Yeah. So I used to sneak out a little bit like that. And then also sometimes I just go stay at my friend's house and then we would sneak out of his house. Because that one was easier because his parents didn't have an alarm on the on any door. You know, we had a screen door um here at the house and Big Booty Judy kept ran through it multiple times. So we just took it out. Yeah, I gotta get rid of it. By the way, Big Booty Judy is our is Indiana Jones. It's, it's his dog. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Iman gave him the name Big Booty Judy probably around almost two years ago. Yeah. And we don't call him pretty much anything else. I, I love those answers. I love those answers. Yeah. That's what it, I would do. Are you it. going to want to like coach teams and all that stuff? Look at that. Definitely. I gray my hair. So I definitely sure. want to coach teams. Yeah? Yeah. If we ever have any time, we should try to coach a little league team out here. Yeah, it's so fucking hot. Yeah, uh, we also just don't have any time because we're gone every weekend when the games would Yeah. Be. So the kids would practice for three days during the week and then show up Saturday for a game with no coach. Were you... Were you... Um, looking back... With your sports, do you wish I had pushed you less or more or whatever? No, I think I was pushed just the right amount because I was pushed to a point to where I wanted to play the sport so bad. But then when, when I was denied that, like for baseball, and I found a love for something else that kept me out of that dark place, yeah. you were like, yeah, just do whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Because there was also a good, a good chance that I had worked out all year again for baseball, got into the same spot next season and not made the team for the same reasons. Yeah. So like I could have gone through that heartbreak twice because I remember not making that baseball team my freshman year and going and people are like, you're going to try. That was brutal for you, dude. Brutal. Yeah. That was really a tough brutal. time for you. I, and because there were four kids on that team that shouldn't have been on that team, but were on that team for political reasons because their parents donated more money to the school than we did. Well, we didn't donate any money. To That's school. what I mean. Um, but, but, I never understood why if I was paying tuition, I then had to donate more money. No, no. By the way, it didn't make any sense. With you, I'm glad you guys didn't donate. What's the fucking point? The okay. school already made 15 grand off of every kid that went to the school a year. They had enough fucking money. Yeah. Like, you know, it's interesting. You should see their new, you should see their new parking structure, the baseball field, really? the gym. Oh my. Dude, they built a four-story parking garage. Where? Behind the baseball field. Behind the baseball field where the football field is? No, no. Other side. Other side. Near where that's where the street side is. Oh, no shit. Yeah. It's massive. Is that for just students' cars? Yeah. Holy shit. It's crazy. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Did you ever get high at school there? No. Oh, God, no. No, no, no. I, I never did. Because... Did some people? Oh, yeah. And especially as it got like later on, like... As high school, as I progressed in high school, my senior year, like if I was still there my senior year, I for sure would have found either, you know, found kids doing it or I probably would have done it because that school drove me insane. I know. Um, but, you, but yeah. You know, what a very interesting time for your mom and I as parents, be, knowing that you were going through some difficulty, not only with your confidence about uh, sports, mm -hmm. which is the first time that your confidence had kind of been shook with sports. It's because I like I was usually the best player where yeah, I went. Yeah, yeah. And then by the time I got there, it was all of the other best players. And yeah, I was like, oh, right. I, I may not be the best player anymore. That, Holy that shit. That is what happens every time you move up a level. Yeah, you move up a level. So not only were you struggling s with your sports, you had started to struggle socially a little uh -huh. bit. And um, you had started to get bullied. And it was such a difficult time for your mom and I to navigate. You know, I, I was like, we can't go into school and say anything because that's going to make it worse for him. If right. a teacher comes to some people and it was like, be nice to Jacob, it's going to be the worst fucking year of his life. 100%. Um, I remember going into Chelsea lately one day, dude. 
and you had just had just the roughest morning. Yeah. And I went in and was it the morning that somebody had stuck a maxi pad on my backpack? And I yeah. went went in and I had talked to you and I I was in Sarah Colonna's office and I just started to cry because I was like, I'm I can't help him. Like he has to do this himself. Mm -hmm. He has to figure out a way to be okay. Yeah. Because I, I think one of the big problems that that I think one of the big problems with parenting right now is that people solve all of their kids' problems for them. Yeah. And so you're you're sending people out in the world who don't know how to problem solve. You're giving them no survival instincts. Right, right, right. Like they they don't know they if they're giving a sink or swim situation, they're going to sink because they don't know how to swim. Right. But but it's a it's a touchy spot because some bullying needs a, a, needs extra work. Needs yeah, something yeah, to step yeah. in. hundred percent And so like it's a weird line. It, yeah, it was a really delicate but I, but I, 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 both your mom and I trusted you enough and who you are as a person that we were both like, he just needs a new, yeah. he needs a fresh start. However, I will say bullying and this type of bullying nowadays could be helped and stopped, not by teachers, not by parents, but by students. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say this directly into the fucking camera coming from someone who was bullied from age nine to 18. Okay. I was bullied. All my entire what what were you generally bullied about? Middle school was my hair because yeah. I grew it out for the very first time and I looked like a girl. Yeah, because I was but, too skinny. Because but you also were doing it for locks for love, dude. Yeah, but that but still people were like, you look like a girl, and as a but as a as a young kid, that's but so hard. Can I just tell you something? How much I knew how much you were getting bullied for that, and how much respect your mom and I had for your fucking intestinal fortitude. Where I knew you were getting an ear beating every fucking day you went. <laughs> every day. But you were growing your hair out in honor of Beth's mom, mm -hmm. your grandma, who had cancer. Mm -hmm. Yo, dude, it it spoke volumes yeah. about who you are as a person. And it's funny, after I got my hair cut, I remember going to baseball practice and I was on a team with <sighs> there were two kids I oh no. Couple of kids I strongly disliked, yeah. but also like in that league, there were a lot of other kids yeah, on yeah, different yeah. teams. Yeah, yeah, and, I, I remember. and I remember getting into high school, uh, and one of those kids was uh, we had talked about it, and he that that dude and that group of kids always was like tried to pick on me and then act like we were cool, but it was never really like anything. We were always just kind of like I'm not even gonna say frenemies. I'm calling enemies. Yeah, but I remember them coming up to me and and I would. They were like, yeah, but it was, you know, we're making fun of you just like we made fun of you with your long hair. I go, yeah, but you made fun of me when I had my long hair, but never asked why I had long hair and why I didn't cut it. And they go, yeah, but they're like, yeah. So I go, yeah, did you know I was donating it to cancer patients? And they're like, no, I didn't know that. I go, yeah, y'all never bothered to ask, but just assumed that I like keeping my hair long so yeah. I can take shit from you guys for the rest of the school year. Like, I never understood that. But like this, back to what I was saying, look. If you are somebody at a school, okay, if you're a student, right, and you see another kid being picked on by somebody you know or you know that kid, it will not stop unless we start standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Please, coming from a kid who got... It, ver, I'm so glad it wasn't physical because I was never big enough to stand up for myself. I would have stepped in. I understand that. And I think I would have had friends that stopped up, stepped up had it gotten physical. But... Shit like that will not stop unless people or peers of the same group of age start to stand up, stand up for those, stand up for the underdog, stand up for that kid who can't say anything or defend himself. It will go not only lengths for everybody, not only for that kid who you are standing up for, but it will go lengths for the rest of the kids in this country and this world who struggle from just getting thrown in trash cans, stuffed in lockers. Picked on Thank shit you, that out of that happened to you. No, no, no. I'm not saying it was, yeah. but it is happening to can I, so many kids. Can I tell you? And, and let me ask you, <clears throat> like, what was it? I don't think I've ever asked you this before. What was it that people about you or whatever that people like when they were picking on you or whatever? What what was it? It was, it was, I think it was more also because I was sensitive. Like, I, I remember one it's thing. It's 100%. I think one more thing my freshman year, like, I tried out for basketball, knowing damn well I would. Remember, I told you, I was like, yo, I'm going to try out for the basketball team. If I'm spot number 12, fuck it, I'm spot number 12. Like, yeah. maybe I'll get in on the good side with some of these fucking dudes. And I remember 
not making the first cut. And I was like, that that's not right. Mm-hmm. Like, I know for sure. I know for sure I am not on this team, on this team, but I know for damn sure that I'm making first cuts. And I started to walk out and I was like, all right, cool. Like, that's all good. I'll get to sleep and we'll figure it out. And then coach, well, the coach would call me back and I'd say, hey, wait, didn't I call your name? I go, no coach. He goes, what's your name? And I told him my name. He goes, oh, you're for sure supposed to be on second second list. So you made first cut. We'll see you tomorrow. And I was like, all right, cool facts. I get into the locker room. There's another kid who's my grade, but he's 6'5". And so he played summer ball and he'd been playing ball his life. So he was automatically on the freshman team, didn't have to try out, and then was like teetering a little bit with varsity, right? And I, he had a locker right next to me. And he came up to me. And he goes, I saw you bitch over there at a coach that you didn't make first cuts. So he, so you cried and he gave you cuts to, or like to make the first cut. And I go, yeah, you fucking wish I cried over there, bro. I go, no, I, I walked away. Coach called me back. And so he would just like, he would say that and then call me like a bitch and say that I was crying to coach. And then he would legit like call other people over to call me a bitch in a group. And it was like, uh, I never understood why. Um, so for that, for the, like, and trust me, I, I his name is on my list. I got a lot of names on my list. Can I tell you? His name is fucking top four. There's 100%. No, there's no doubt that, and I would say this to your mom, she, because she was like, what is it? What can we do? And I was like, here's the positive and the negative about, not negative, but here's the positive about Jacob Wolf, but that is going to make him a target. He's a sensitive kid. Mm-hmm. He's a sensitive kid who does not, the, I, whenever there was like people making fun of each other, you were like, I don't like that. That was not your mm-hmm. way of communicating, which, and it's a very teenage boy way to yeah. communicate with each other, right? Yeah. Kind of meat heady, especially you lean towards athletics. So there was a lot, it's Lucky. kind of, it's kind of meat heady yeah. for dudes to be making, 100%. right? And the person that gets picked on is the person that reacts or the disease, right? And I was, uh, I definitely gave a reaction. 100%. Yeah. And so like, I would tell your mom, I was like, this is gonna be a tough time for him, but, but your sensitivity will serve you well in life. A hundred percent. You know, but it, being in high school, it was, I was able to contain or not. I was able to obtain that gauge of when to be sensitive, when to not be sensitive, and when to, you know, how to turn it on and off almost. But I will say also, like, well, I mean, I did get, I did get physically targeted in football yes. by that one kid. Yes. Um, because I didn't call on him when he raised his hand in English class. A fucking pussy. That kid. Fucking. I mean, he's a Marine now, though. That makes sense. All that mental yeah. shit, that's exactly where the fuck he should be, dog. That makes sense to me. But yeah, I got I got targeted on the football field by my own teammates, by more than one teammate. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I will say, thinking about that football team and just thinking back uh, a couple weeks ago, a kid from Notre Dame, who I want to shout out, this is just popping into my head randomly, a kid named Hunter Woods. Um, remember that name. You remember Hunter? Remember when we, I went to Cali Christmas, you got me those tickets for that concert? That's right. And Hunter, Hunter's mom took us? Yeah. So... Hunter was a dude I met freshman year. We played football together uh, sophomore year. But him and I had always kind of like had this almost like unwritten friendship. And when I switched schools, we were always cool. And he came over uh, one night for a New Year's Eve, like a couple of years ago when I was still in LA. Like we always find these little hidden pockets to where we catch up with each other and we say what's up. Um, but he texted me the other day and was like, yo, See you guys are doing a whole bunch of shit. It's real glad, you know, real glad to see you're doing what you're doing. Let's let's hang when you're in LA next. And so it, it's just nice to hear from Hunter. Like there were a couple people from that school that I can that I still see today. Like Charlie Wood, I still see Hunter is somebody I still talk to. Those might be the fucking only two. Riley, um, Riley didn't go to Notre Dame. Oh, okay. Remember Riley went to Loyola. Oh, that's right. That's right. He we kept trying to get his parents to transfer him to Notre Dame because he lived right down the street. Yeah, he did. he, he drove an hour to school yeah. <laughs> every morning to like K-Town. Oh, to like K-Town. Fucking. To go to Loyola. And I, uh, I don't remember why, but I remember he like, he was already there for a year or two. So he had like volleyball connections and he had his friends already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, you live down the street from the school. And for some reason, his parents wouldn't let him go to Notre Dame. Probably because he, they didn't want you going, him going with you and Charlie. It would have been a drunk high extravaganza. Yeah, but I mean, all guy school doesn't fucking help that much. Yeah, it makes you want to drink some more. 
All right. Yeah. Tr- trust me with the friends that, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. But, uh, but shout out, shout out Hunter Woods, man. Miss you, brother. I hope you're doing well. Here Here's we also go. Leave Navy. From Megan. Hi, Josh and Jacob Wolf. Hello, Megan. I have a question for you both. What's your favorite memory with each other? I probably missed it if you guys answered. All right, Megan. Thank you so much. Uh, favorite memory with each other. I got two. I want to go okay. that first trip to the DR for the for the David Ortiz Celebrity Golf Classic. That was a good time. That was awesome. And the first trip, just me and you, or the for, first trip all together? That was the first trip, me and you, I and think, the first trip all together. I think your mom came on the first trip. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you meant first trip. Okay, yeah, no. So the first trip for you and I. Yeah. Um, and that was a good time. That was a good time. And the second one for me is the first time we sat on the monster. Mm. That's a good one. On the tell everybody what that means, the monster. Oh yeah, sorry. The first time that uh, my dad and I sat on the green monster at Fenway Park. Yeah. Fenway Park is where the Red Sox play. Yeah, sat um, on the monster sounds, sounds like, like we took a dirty together. euphemism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That time we rode the monster. Yeah, we sat on the monster. And, uh, and you know what that makes me think of? It's like that awesome powers where they go. Oh yeah, and then she shat on a turtle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're speaking proper English. Hey, dude. God, I fucking love that movie. What? I but yeah the, the, those that the first time on the monster I have a video on my Snapchat of us singing Sweet Caroline that seventh inning up there uh, from that specific night and it was uh, yeah that that's a good one I remember that I shed one tear on that on that monster yeah dude tears of joy I love it it's good you know that's the best seat in baseball okay. you can't you cannot tell me different this is a very difficult question for me and I'm gonna narrow it down because it's a question for both of you what's your favorite memory with each other so I'm going to I'm going to take out any memories that have like your mom or your brother and your sister. Okay. Five, four. And, yep. All right. So here we go. This is, this is, this is muy difficile, but it's definitely going to be with you as like a four. I think it might be good. Okay. I think it might be your very first T-ball game. Okay. Blue yeah. Jays. Yes. I remember right. that team. That's right. Come on. And the pure joy, the 100% joy you had on your face running around third base, your first hit was a home run. That's most people's are in T-ball because you just kept running. You just keep running, yeah. But the pure joy running around third base, you were laughing and crying at the same time. I feel like I, feel like I remember that. You was were I also a, a, so happy. Were we also on a Twins team as a T-ball team or was it just the Blue Jays? Blue Jays, I think. You only played one year T-ball. I also cried when I got out the first time because I had never gotten out. And yeah. then like four games in, I had gotten tagged out. I, I had just, to walk out on the field and explain to you that you were out. Yeah. But, we have a picture of that. Yeah. The pure joy, dude, of you running around those bases, laughing and crying, and then just the jump hug at the end was just like, and it's a moment, but, but that is so, it's such a pure moment to me. Right. I don't know that I will ever forget seeing your face as you round a third. Like this dude is having the fucking Time day. Of his life. Oh my god! Thanks. Nice. Uh, and that there, that, I'll tell you something, man. That's why kids laugh because they haven't been jaded by life. It's pure. That pure. Yeah, joy. it's it's pure joy, hundred percent. And it is. You know, nice. life life hasn't ripped it out of him yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like um, I said the other day, tears of tears of joy turned to tears of sadness real, real quick. fucking quick. Real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, everybody, we were in Des Moines this weekend. Of what a great week of a weekend of shows. Absolutely. Right? Really, really good time. I mean, a great, great weekend of shows. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to thank everybody who came out to the shows and bought merch and took pictures. Mm-hmm. We are making a bring your kid to work tour shirt. Sick. Um, I think the idea that we have uh, landed on, you want to tell everybody? Yeah. Oh, is that the one that we talked about the other day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to be that iconic Michael Jackson photo, right? 
Uh, I don't. I think it's him. Yeah, hanging blanket. Yeah, hanging, uh, uh, hanging blanket out off the window. So we'll just put my face on Michael Jackson's body and your face on blanket. Yeah, I well, think that's gonna I, be. I funny. think it'd be super funny. Also, maybe we'll, we'll reverse it and see if it, see if it looks funnier if it's switched. My face on a the blanket and me on Michael Jackson. Yeah, I mean, I think we're good. With whatever. Might be funny, but we'll see. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna swap those up. We are actively looking for Hey Man merch. I have to decide. Um, what we want that font to look like. Yep. Um, but if you have any ideas for art and we use it, we will, of course, kick you some dough. Hey man pod with three A's at gmail.com. Yep. Hey man, send those in. Yep. At gmail.com. And also keep your questions coming. Probably once a month, we'll do an email show. Like just, oh, for like just for YouTube and whatnot? E- yeah. No, on here. Oh, like just a question? Yeah. We, this was mostly questions today, I think, wasn't it? I don't even I think remember. it was 30. I think it was 50 50. 50 50. Because we talked for a good 30. 30 I do love the fact, I mean, by the way, you you saying that that 50 Cent is top five rap album of all time. Get Rich or Die Trying? Yeah. Top five rap album of all time. You know that he sung yep. It's Your Birthday to Your Mom. It's called Into Club. Yeah, Into Club. Get it right. But yeah, Get Rich or Die Trying, that album is so fucking good. Top five. Give me your top five. Right now. Oof. Um, Get Richard Dyke trying. Get Richard Dyke. This is no particular order. Yeah. Get Richard Dyke trying. Forest Hills Drive. Uh, That's J. Cole. J. Cole. Let me see if I can name the artists. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going Good Kid, Mad City. Um, G Money. <laughs> no. Come on. Come on. We, I listen Kendrick Lamar. There you go. Good, uh, Good Kid, Mad City. His first studio album. That's actually... Uh, right after he released that in 2012, and Hunter and I went and saw him perform that for the very first time live at that Cali Christmas in December of 2012, okay, all right. which was fucking awesome. Okay. Um, that's three. Um, you caught me off guard with this one. I know. Um, oh, I, mm, you don't have to answer them all now. I, and those are your top three. Those are three for sure. I'd probably put like. I think I'd try and put Chronic in there. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I can't argue with that. And then for five, I don't know. Five, I'd have to look. I'd probably put like an M album in there. Or like, actually, you know, you could take out, you could take out that last one I just said. You could put like the Black album in there. You could put uh, the first Marshall Mathers LP. Uh, you could put the Relapse album on there. Uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot. I think there's an interchangeable. I think Kanye's Homecoming could be on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? College Dropout could be up there. Yeah. Um, that Nas album he just won a Grammy for us. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, there's so many good ones. Kendrick's Damn that won a Pulitzer Award. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot of really good options. I feel like top five for me is hard. Top ten might be more doable for okay. me next time. Next one. And by the way, I want you to know I've gotten this whole. Podcast. No, you flexed your pecs multiple times. I watched it happen. No, not my, but my arm. But I didn't flex uh-huh. my arm. Comedian Joshua's on comedy for tour dates and tickets. Uh, Joshua of comedy on all platforms. Uh, like he said, we're in New Brunswick, New Jersey, Jersey this weekend. Um, come say what's up. Lee Friday. Syatt is going to be there too. Woo! I love Lee. Me too. Um, so we'll be there this weekend. Uh, and then Erie, Pens- or Pittsburgh, and then Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, the f- the fourth, fifth, and sixth, I think, is what it is. Third, fourth, and fifth. Sorry, third, fourth, and fifth, and then after that, on the tenth, we are in Jacksonville, and then eleventh and twelfth of August, we are in Orlando, Florida. Don't uh, forget Nashville on the sixth. The Bonanza Extravaganza. Extravaganza. Those are going. That show is going to be ridiculous. You should start like, saying Extravaganza like RuPaul does. Extra- I don't know how she says it. Uh, she, she so Bonanza Extravaganza. Bonanza extravaganza. Yeah, I'm in for that. Okay, cool. Um, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. And hey, I'm streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not today, though, because I have shit to do before we fly out tonight. But Monday, Tuesday, uh, and sometimes Wednesdays, we're streaming back on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash youthful wolf. Uh, hopefully, it'll pop up right here if you're watching. But if you're listening... Um, that's what it is. We had a really fun stream last night. Got drunk with the boys. Played some old school video games. What were you getting drunk on? Some spiked Simply Lemonades. Oh, shit. So they're the Simply Lemonades, yeah. but with, it's like a seltzer. So they were all flavored. And you're not a real drinker. Like how many 
does it take for you to feel a little something? I mean, I drank four of them last night. That's pretty good. But I drank four in like five hours. So it's like one an hour. Yeah. Or one every... You, you know what I, I mean, listen, I I don't drink anymore. So if I had yeah. two tequilas, I'd be shit-faced. Yeah. But so I, I if it was either the Simply Lemonades or a bottle of tequila. And I figured I wanted to get through my stream. So I decided not to drink yeah. the tequila. Because I tend to drink tequila faster than I can drink those seltzers Me for too. some reason. Because I'll, this is what I started doing now. And it's so dangerous. I get fucked up really fast. I'll pour a drink. And then when it's kind of towards the end of it, I'll just pour more tequila in it and then a mixer. So I'm just like, my drink is never empty and I'm never making a fresh drink. So I'm just always adding more tequila and more mixer to yeah. the tequila and mixer that are already in there. So yeah, that I learned that lesson the hard way before we moved to Vegas. How often do you think you drink? Like twice a month? Not even. I haven't. The last time I drank was when McKay came to drop off the merch. Oh, no shit. Yeah, dude. I don't I don't drink. Sometimes I'll drink if we're out of the casino. Like if we're having fun on the machine and I'm actually winning something, I'll get a drink. But uh, um, I have alcohol at home for friends. That's what it's always been there. Yeah, for. I used to do that too. Yeah. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all socials. Uh, MediaJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. We're just going to go in circles. Um, thank you guys again for stopping by. Please stop with the ring or grudge shit that you're doing with the microphone. Ooh. Also, don't forget, tell a buddy, tell a friend. Uh, we're having so much fun on this podcast. Go ahead, lead us out. What, what am I leading you out on? Uh, you're supposed to say something. What do you say at the end of it? Oh, oh, yeah. Look, thank you guys so much for being here. We really appreciate y'all. Tell somebody you love them and do something good for someone today. All right? We love you guys. You're a good dude. Talk to you later. Later, everybody.